All right, let's continue with Tasha's cauldron of everything by continuing here with the fighter class. We can see we've got some new fighting styles and maneuver options to both look at. So here they start us off with fighter, talking about optional class features. And right down here at level one, they talk about new fighting style options. When you choose a fighting style, the following styles are added to your list of options. Number one, blind fighting. And this may be one of the best without a doubt right here gives you blind sight with a range of 10 feet. Within that range, you can effectively see anything that isn't behind total cover, even if you're blinded or in darkness. Moreover, you can see an invisible creature within that range unless the creature successfully hides from you. So that gives you a, a new advantage if you're blinded in total darkness or if an invisible creature is fighting you. It's really three things being added with that. Number two, interception. When a creature you can see hits a target other than you within five feet of you with an attack, you can use your reaction to reduce the damage the target takes by 1d10 plus your proficiency bonus to a minimum of zero. You must be wielding a shield or a simple or martial weapon to use this reaction. So it looks like you can reduce the damage to someone else in the group. If somebody like a caster with low hit points, that could be very helpful. Number three, superior technique. You learn one maneuver of your choice from among those available to the battle master archetype. If a maneuver you use requires your target to make a saving throw to resist the maneuver's effects, the saving throw DC <clears throat> equals eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your strength or dex modifier, whichever you choose. You gain one superiority die, which is a D6, this die is added to any superiority dice you have from another source. This die is used to fuel your maneuvers. A superiority die is expended when you use it. You regain your expended superiority dice when you finish a short or long rest. Here they show us a young fighter spars with an instructor in the little picture down here. They always got such great art. So after the first three, we get to number four here, <clears throat> thrown weapon fighting. You can draw a weapon that has the thrown property as part of the attack you make with the weapon. In addition, when you hit with a ranged attack using a thrown weapon, you gain a plus two bonus to the damage roll. So if you like the thrown weapons, that's a good one for you there. Number five, unarmed fighting. Your unarmed strikes can deal bludgeoning damage equal to 1d6 plus your strength modifier on a hit. If you aren't wielding any weapons or a shield, when you make the attack roll, the D6 becomes a D8. So unarmed fighting gets better. At the start of each of your turns, you can deal 1D4 bludgeoning damage to any creature grappled by you. <clears throat> so you can grapple a creature and just beat them to death all at the same time there. Then at level four, they have listed here martial versatility. Whenever you reach a level in this class that grants the ability score improvement feature, you can do one of the following. As you shift the focus of your martial practice, first, replace a fighting style you know with another fighting style available to fighters. A lot of people like to do that. If you know any maneuvers from the Battle Master archetype, you can replace one maneuver you know with a different maneuver. So it gives you the options to mix them up. That's always nice. And then we have our maneuver options. If you have access to maneuvers, the following maneuvers are added to the list of options available to you. Maneuvers are available to battle masters, but also to characters who have a special feature like the superior technique fighting style or the martial adept feat. So first maneuver option they have listed here is ambush. When you make a dexterity stealth check or an initiative roll, you can expend one superiority die and add the die to the roll provided you aren't incapacitated. So it gives you a little advantage right there when you're making a dexterity stealth check or an initiative roll. Number two, bait and switch. When you're within five feet of a creature on your turn, you can expend one superiority die and switch places with that creature provided you spend at least five feet of movement and the creature is willing and isn't incapacitated. So let you sw swap places. This movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. Another good thing, roll the superiority die. Until the start of your next turn, you or the other creature, your choice, gains a bonus to AC equal to the number rolled. 
as it might help you to pull uh, somebody in the party like a wizard out of a bad situation. Number three here is brace. When a creature you can see moves into the reach you have with the melee weapon you're wielding, you can use your reaction to expend one superiority die and make one attack against the creature using that weapon. If the attack hits, add the superiority die to the weapon's damage roll. So it's always good to have those reactions there. Number four, commanding presence. When you make a charisma intimidation, a charisma performance, or charisma persuasion check, you can expend one superiority die and add the die to the ability check. So up your ability check a bit right there. Number five, grappling strike. Immediately after you hit a creature with a melee attack on your turn, you can expend one superiority die and then try to grapple the target as a bonus action. Always great to get bonus actions. Add the superiority die to your strength athletics check. So if you like to grapple, good one right there. Number six, quick toss. As a bonus action, you gotta love these bonus actions and reactions. <clears throat> As a bonus action, you can expend one superiority die and make a ranged attack with a weapon that has the thrown property. You can draw the weapon as part of making this attack. If you hit, add the superiority die to the weapon's damage roll. So I love your damage there. Number seven, tactical assessment. When you make an intelligence investigation, an intelligence history, or a wisdom insight check, you can expend one superiority die and add the superiority die to the ability check. So you can see some of these are helping checks of some kind or another, whether it's a grapple, an intelligence, or what's this, a charisma check, and so on down the line. But always good to have some new options loaded up. So here's the new video for you here with the new fighter just getting started on it. Until the next time, good luck and good gaming.